just a quick announcement just for you to know. Midweek service is still online on Wednesday, so you want to tune in and watch. It, it's really powerful. You want to tune in and watch. And research is our 21 days of fasting and prayer. It starts September the 14th. Now, this year is different, and because the Lord spoke to my heart, you know, and, and God told me, say, have you noticed what is happening? I said, well, Lord, what's happening? Have you noticed that the media is covering death, covering recession, covering divorces, and there's no good news? And because of that, people are shrinking their goals. People are believing for the worst. Like I told someone, I said, I don't know anybody personally that died of coronavirus, but I know people that have died in this season more than ever before. But the reason why is that faith comes by hearing. So the more all this news is out there, the more evil will happen. And God said, during this research time, one research is going to be 40 days. Amen? Yeah, praise the Lord. So 21 days, we're going to fast and pray. And the remaining 19 days, we're going to do Thanksgiving. We're just going to be thanking God for everything we've fasted and prayed for. And God says, this is what I want to do. When they're hearing confusion, death, all of those things, that's what happens to them. Begin to challenge them to believe you for double. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to literally in this season believe God for double. We're going to believe God for double. We're going to believe God for double. So what we thought was, was infinite and possible, we'll begin to believe God for that. So this research starts on September the 14th. I want to get ready. We'll be fasting and praying. I'll be, I don't know if you, leave, if you watch the prayers online. Do you watch the prayers online? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The, the, the prayers, the early morning, I leave, uh, for the past, I think, six months now, I've been leading prayers every single day, weekday. And it's really powerful, 6.30 a.m. And the testimonies have been phenomenal. They have been phenomenal. Um, let me read a testimony to you just today. This testimony came in just today. This testimony came in. Um, where is it? This testimony says, Dear Pastor, about three days ago, during the prayers, you mentioned two figures. One was 85 million naira, and one was 3.5 million naira. 85 million naira represented what I lost as equity in a, in a business and transaction I did last year. And 3.5 billion naira is the expectation from a deal I'm working on. He said, without knowing, during the, during the prayer in the morning, 6.30 a.m., I was just speaking about the Spirit, and I mentioned all those figures. He said, when myself and my team commenced the process for this deal, it's an oil and gas deal. We only had CAC documents, no DPR. DPR is Department of Petroleum Resources permits. It says, just faith in God. I joined the 6.30 a.m. prayers this morning, and as I always do, believing that God will come through. On Thursday, we'll receive a message that will submit our draft contract. Praise the Lord. It said, it said our draft contract from, this is an oil producer that has never seen me before only knows of me by asking of me, asking for a draft of take agreement. This in itself, it's a miracle. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And, and just so many, many testimonies. I, I, I mean, so many, many testimonies. I want to say, suggest to you, if you're not involved in the prayer, you need to follow on Instagram on Bola GID. And tomorrow morning, tomorrow we're going to really pray about businesses and finances. You want to join in. And I want to say, all of you that join in, this is a good time to invite your friends. You can imagine the amount of people, testimonies I'm getting from. Even last night, we we'll see some person that got a testimony from London. We're getting a person from London, from Australia, from Canada. You know, it's just amazing. It's just really amazing. So you can take out your phone right now and just follow Bola GID over there. Just follow Bola GID and you, you can participate. What that does for you is that anytime the prayer is on, it's automatically show up on you. And all of you that attend, I want to say something. I want to challenge you. This tomorrow, can you invite five people to join our prayers? It's prayers. You can, they don't have to be in this church. They don't have to be in Lagos. They can be anywhere in the world. Just say, join our prayers today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join the prayers because it's powerful. Um, by the end of the message, I'm going to share with you about two or three women that got pregnant through the prayers, believing God for children, and just praying. They got pregnant and, you know, just, it's just amazing what the Lord is doing in our midst. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. All right. So, I, I wanted to share that with you. Glory to God. So then, so then, so this morning, I will be teaching. I, so, we started the teaching on how to pray and get results. And I'm still teaching on how to pray and get results. How to pray and get results. So, basically, we understand from, from my talking with people the greatest frustration of many Christians is that they have unanswered prayers. The greatest frustration I know amongst many Christians is that they have unanswered prayers. And it's frustrating. It's, see, it's frustrating to know that your heavenly father can do something, 
But it's really frustrating to know that he's not able to do it for you. How many of you have experienced the frustration of unanswered prayers before? Wave your hands, let me see. All of you not waving your hands, thank you for lying. You're in church this Sunday morning. So, so Gideon said, excuse me, God. He said, where is all the miracles that you spoke about? Like, we hear that our God is powerful. We hear our God can answer prayers. But look at us for many years right now. Nothing seems to be happening. What's going on, God? And, and the reason I'm saying so is that it's not, that, it's not just... It's not just Gideon that has such crushed expectation. Everybody has an expectation. L -l Let me read to you. Let me read to you. Judges chapter 6. Let me read to you. Judges chapter 6. Verse 12. I'm going from the new, from maybe the New Living Translation. From the New Living, Living Translation. So the Bible says, <laughs> in verse 13, Sir, Gideon replied the angel, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the miracles that were answered us, told us? Didn't they say that God brought us out of Egypt? But now, God has abandoned us and has handed us over to the Midianites. And the reason why is that at this time, Israel was going through a very tough time. They would, they would go to farm, and when it was time for harvest, the Midianites would come and take their crops away. They were going to a recession. And I know what it means. So, so when people have frustration, in, frustration because of answer prayers, it looks like one of those five things. The first thing that it looks like is this. It looks as if God is disregarding me. It looks as if I'm not important to God. And, and maybe that's your question right now. And you're wondering, that, Lord, I've been praying about someone to marry. Like, give me a person to marry. And you're wondering, what's going on, Lord? Why are you not answering my prayer? Some other people feel as if they have been deserted, like David. David felt as if, David said things like, God, why have you forsaken me? You are hearing about someone getting a, a profit of 3.5 billion naira. You say, God, I'm not asking for a profit of 3.5 billion naira. I'm asking you for 350k to pay my house rent. God, why is it so difficult for me? You feel as if you're deserted. Do, do, do you know that feeling of frustration? You, you feel as if you are disliked. This is what Gideon felt like. Gideon said that God has changed towards us. When he was our fathers, he was good. Have you ever come into church before and you see people that you know and you hear their testimonies of what God has done for them and what God is doing for them and you're wondering, what about me? Because you really feel as if God, I'm disliked by God. You feel as if, if, if I'm not disliked by God, why am I still struggling with this fibroid? If I'm not disliked my God, how can I have a child that I carry for nine months and I give birth to that child and the child has a sickness from birth? What did I do to God? And upon that, I'm praying so much, but I'm seeing no results. The other, the other thing you feel, you, you, sometimes you feel like Hannah. What did Hannah feel? Hannah felt so depressed. Hannah felt so depressed. Some of you are so depressed. You are so depressed because you have been trying to grow the company. The company has been doing 20 million per annum for the past five years. The more you grow it, the more it sinks. And you're feeling so depressed. You are so depressed because there was an investment you prayed about and the money is gone. And you feel so depressed. You feel so depressed because of your teenage child. And, and that child is behaving like he's, he's going bonkers. And you're wondering, God, what's going on? And you're feeling so depressed because you thought that God brought this wonderful guy to your life. You thought everybody, this is a man of God. But the guy started behaving like a jerk. And you're wondering, God, God, what's the problem? Did I, I feel so depressed. And the last frustration is this, I feel deceived. When people are really frustrated with unanswered prayers, it gets to the point where they feel deceived. Do you know something? Most people you see on social media that criticize churches and pastors, when you read their stories, they were once very serious Christians that feel as if it didn't work out and they got very discouraged, depressed, and they felt deceived. Yes or no? Yeah. But, but, but I, I don't see, I, I understand them because when you read the Bible and you read of a woman called Sarah, the Bible says God told Sarah she would have a child, but 20 years had gone, she had not had a child. So one angel showed up at her door one day and the angel said, Sarah, by this time they say you have a child. And guess what Sarah did? I believe I received in Jesus' name. Is that what she did? No! When that happened, she went, ha, ha, ha! She, she started laughing. You know why? Because to her, she felt she had been deceived all along. How many of you have been tithing for such a long time? And when you needed something, you felt like, hmm, it seemed as if I was deceived. How many of you, uh, let, let me tell you how bad it is. Uh, do you know people that come to church and they say, 20, 2015 is your year. 2016 is your year. So when they say, 
2020, they say that, I, <laughs> see, don't, don't deceive me again. E every year is my year. Nothing has happened. I, I'm not going to say amen again. That's how Sarah felt. S S Sarah felt as if, hey, don't tell me such things again. That's how Sarah felt. So if you're going through the frustration of prayer, I understand where you're going from. I understand what you're going through. But the truth is this. This is why I process it. This is why I process it. When my prayer are not answered, the first thing that helps me is this. I always remind myself, I'm not serving God for things. I serve him because of him. Oh, my God. When I struggle with prayer and it's tough, I always tell myself, see, it's not about things. It's about him. Even if he doesn't do anything more for him, I will still serve him because I love him. Th that's my heart desire. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's my heart desire. So the next thing I want to, so, so, so I remind myself, but the key thing now is this. If God is calling us to prayer, why is prayer not really happening like that? Is it possible to pray and the prayer doesn't have like a result? Of course, look at the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Let's look at that quickly. 1 Samuel chapter 1. In verse, let's just, I think it was verse 12 first. Verse Samuel chapter 1 verse 12. Because before you feel that this is just you. First Samuel chapter 1 verse, um, verse 7. Let's read from verse 7 first. The Bible says, and he did so year by year. This is Hannah's husband. And when she went up to the house of the Lord, so provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. So, Hannah used to go to pray, and she had one prayer point. I want to have a child. That's her prayer point. I want to have a child. Some of you are here. Your prayer point is simple, Lord. I want to scale my business. Some of you are here. Your prayer point is simple, Lord. I want to be able to have capital for the next phase of my business. Some of you are, so, some of you are here. Your prayer point is simple, Lord. I need to migrate from Nigeria. Some of you are here, Lord. I just need some breakthrough when it comes to my finances. Something like that. And Anna too was praying that way. And she would pray year in, year out. But she didn't have a child. But guess what? It's amazing because she was praying year in, year out. didn't have a child. But this year, everything changed. And, and that's what I want to look at. How do you pray to get results? How do you pray to get results? What changed for Anna that year? And, and l l let me just jump quickly um, to, um, to verse 12. The Bible says, and it came to pass one of the other times that Hannah went to pray and as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth and Hannah spake in her heart but her lips moved but her voice was not heard. And let me say something quickly here. If you come to church and because you don't pray like some people that pray, you condemn someone's posture in prayer, just know that you are becoming proud. Because you can't condemn my posture in prayer because you don't understand my pain that led to my posture. Sometimes you see people that pray violently. Like, what is wrong with them? You don't know what made them pray that way. You should be glad they are not in their shoes. Because some of you are so elliptic in your thinking and you think if people don't pray in a certain way like you, then there's something wrong with them. Some of us have pains in our heart. Some of us have burdens in our heart. Some of us, it, it's just a passion we have been taught to pray with and we don't know how to pray. Come like you. We express the whole of our being and the whole of our heart to God. And sorry if you don't understand that. The Bible says, when Hannah was praying, oh, shut up about her sakata. Eli looked at her and said, hey, what's wrong with you? Because a prayer was not the regular kind of prayer. When you have uncommon needs, you pray uncommon prayers. When you have uncommon needs, you pray uncommon prayers. And let me tell you something. The way prayer is, there are dimensions in prayer. Amen. When you were in primary school, they would say three minus five. They say impossible. When you grow higher, three minus five is minus two. Why? It's a dimensional procedure. In prayer, there are some things that are not possible. When you enter dimension, it's possible again. That dimension is this thing. Let, let me give an example. God told Lot. What did God tell Lot? He said, as you leave Sodom and Gomorrah, don't look back. If you look back, what will happen? You will turn to a pillar of salt. What did God tell Abraham? God woke Abraham up. He said, look, look towards Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> By the spiritual position of Lot, if he looked back, he would turn back. By the spiritual position of Abraham, he could look towards Sodom and Gomorrah and nothing will happen to him. These are dimensions. These are dimensions. So, why was this prayer different? Why was this prayer different? <laughs> and I'm hoping that you will be able to just come to a place where you, you are purging with fire. Ah, this month we are going to praise her. I'm telling you, the, the, the reason why is that 
There is a siege of darkness and depression that is all over the globe. That we need people that can persevere, that can press in and cause a breakthrough to the power of prayer, sir. The Bible says unto thee that answer prayers shall all flesh come. So what, see what happened. Watching this prayer. The Bible says this. And Eli said unto her, because he didn't understand that prayer. How long will you be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Anna said and said, no, my Lord. I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have neither drunk wine nor strong drink, but poured out my soul before the Lord. Count me not as a daughter of Belia. And Eli said in verse 17. And Eli said, watch this now. Eli answered and said, go in peace. When she understood what he was saying. He says, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition as thou hast asked of him. Watch this now. This was what was different about the other prayers. What is it? And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did it, and her countenance was no more sad. What was different? What was different was this. Every time she had come to pray before, she expressed herself. Her prayer was not based upon the vital fact of faith. This time around when she came to pray, there was a word from the prophet that changed everything. How do you know if you are praying in faith? When you pray, are you the same person that prayed? When prayer does not change the way you feel about the thing, you have not prayed, sir. When prayer changes the way you feel and in the place of prayer you have assurance, then your prayer is complete. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Your prayer is complete. Every time she prayed before, every time she prayed before, she would just go back and be sad. But this time around, as soon as the word came, you know why? Because in the place of prayer, our faith was activated. Our belief was activated. When people pray most of the time, this is how you know their prayer is not working, it's not going to go anywhere. They just feel nothing about what they prayed like they prayed. It's as if the prayer makes no difference. But for Anna, that was how she was praying before. But this time was different. You know why it was different? As she returned back, she refused to be sorrowful. Nothing had changed physically. She had not gotten pregnant. But in the spirit, she had taken a possession of that which she wanted. And that had changed her disposition. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So Jesus began to teach on prayer. And this is how you are going to learn how to pray. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. The Bible says this. And in the morning, as they, because the background to this is that a day before, Jesus had cursed a tree for the tree to dry up. So the Bible says that in the morning, as they passed by the tree, the fig tree dried up from its roots. Question, why did the fig tree dry up from its roots? And why did they pass that place? Jesus wanted to use the opportunity to teach his people about prayer. So the Bible says, Peter said, Peter calling to remembrance, said unto the master, Behold, the fig tree which you curse has withered the way. What Peter was saying was this, Master, something significant has happened. You have used your prayer to change circumstances. You have used your prayer to change things. You have used your prayers to alter situation. So if you are here and you're saying that the doctor says I have a fibroid, how can I use my prayer to alter that? If you are here and you feel as if I've lost my job and I've lost money, and right now I feel stuck, what you are saying is that how can I use my prayer to alter things? You are here, you are saying that I've been doing a business at a level of 150 million per annum. I want to move to 500 million. You are saying, how do I change something? You are here as a lady or as a guy. You say, I want to marry, but I cannot find someone that will marry me. And I want to change this outcome. I'm having critical problems in my marriage. My marriage is breaking down. And I want to change it. This was what Peter was saying. Peter was saying to Jesus Christ that Jesus, we see that you spoke to the mountain and the mountain produced a different kind of result. So we are asking you specifically that Jesus, how can we produce result that way? And Jesus began to explain because Jesus wanted them to do the same thing. What did he say? Verse 22, Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. So just Christ said, firstly, this is a principle of faith. And that was what was different between all the Anna's prayer and what he prayed the last time. What did he say? Verse 23. He said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what Jesus Christ did in the earlier verse, 
Jesus began to explain the principles behind it. It's not enough to hear a testimony. For you to replicate the testimony, you must understand the vital principles behind the testimony. Every testimony shared shows what's available. But it is the adaptation and application of those principles that brings about emancipation in every category. He said, Jesus said to them, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he what? Say it. Maybe I should use this microphone. I, all right. So the Bible says this and it says that if he shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. So Jesus Christ expressed the operation of the principle of faith. But that's why I'm going to verse 24. He now began to apply the teaching of faith as regarding prayer. He began to apply what? The teaching of faith as regarding prayer. What did he say? Verse 24. I wanted to look into it. He said, therefore. What's therefore? On the premise of what I've said in verse 23. Therefore, I say unto you, this is how you get prayer to work. That what things soever you what? Desire. He says, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall what? And you shall have them. So this is how prayer works. Number one, he says, what things soever you desire. That means that in the place of prayer, there must be, you must take responsibility. He says, what things you desire. Prayer is not what someone wishes for you. It's what you want by yourself. You must take responsibility for change. You must take responsibility for increase. He says, what things soever you desire. Now, the second thing I want to notice is this. He said, what things soever you desire. He didn't say anything. He didn't, he didn't say what anyone. He said, whatsoever thing. The reason why is that this kind of prayer, where you command and you demand, does not apply to human beings. That's why it says whatsoever things. For example, I cannot say because I'm prayerful right now. I go over there and see a single guy and the single guy is Victor. I say, I claim you are mighty in Jesus' name. It doesn't work that way. He says whatsoever things. This refers to things, not human beings. Are there prayers we can pray that can influence human beings? Those are, are not that dimensions of prayer. But you cannot command a human being to submit to you. The reason why is that God has given every human a will and because that will is the gift of God to man, no prayer can take that will from them. Because some of you are here, you are commanding your boss, I command him this. No, 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 no. You don't command your boss. You don't command a girl to fall in love with you. It doesn't work that way. You don't command customers. I command customers to come in Jesus' name. It doesn't work. And that's why the prayer has not been working. This prayer says whatsoever things. Things means things you can buy. It means houses. It says whatsoever things you desire when you pray. What does it say? He said believe. So let's start. So we've laid the foundation. Number one, you must take responsibility. Number two, there are things. Number three, it must be laid on faith. So I want to say something here that is very critical here. This one I want to emphasize this morning. And when I, when I finish this, I will move to another principle. And this is the missing part of our prayer. Let, let's look at it again. Um, verse, Mark chapter 11, verse what? Verse 24. He says, whatsoever thing you desire, the first problem I notice in this place is that Christians don't understand the desire. I'm telling you. You will hear people pray today. Ask them tomorrow, what did they pray about? They are forgotten. Because it was not a desire. It was a wish. Have you ever seen people praying before? As they are praying. You will hear them say, <laughs> you will see people that want a baby. They say, Father, I'm praying to be pregnant. Nonsense. Listen, if you want a baby, you are not praying to be pregnant. You have been pregnant before three times. That's not what you want. What you want is a child. Your desire is not pregnancy. Your desire is a baby boy. So the reason why your prayer has been entering foul and over the bar is that you keep saying nonsense. Because you want to get pregnant. So count it now. You've gotten pregnant four times. Yes or no? You have gotten. Only that the pregnancy has not lasted beyond three months. And you say God is not faithful. God has done exactly what you said. <laughs> Glory to God. He says, whatsoever thing you desire. Someone says, ha, I'm praying for a breakthrough. Breakthrough is a lot of things. It's, it's a lot of things. He said, whatsoever you desire. You, someone says, Father, I'm praying for favor with my boss. Favor with your boss can mean you start driving him home. And you now know his wife and husband. He do not trust you to drive a cobble. That's what favor can mean. 
He said, whatsoever you desire. Someone says, ah, Father, I'm praying for someone to marry me. But all the guys toasting you, you've not said yes. So God has been faithful, answering all the prayers, sending all these guys. But it's not what you want. He said, whatsoever things you desire. You say, I want the girls that will the, the do this and this and this and this. But when the girl comes, you say, you don't like. It's whatsoever you desire. So what happens is that there is a failure in expressing our desire to God the way we want it. A businessman comes and says, Father, I need capital. Someone gives you 100K. Is that not capital? But it's not you that say you want the capital. 100K is capital. And you're not saying God is not faithful, God is not kind. Mm -hmm. You don't understand. This is the way this thing works. Eh? Satan doesn't want you to have anything. So when you pray, through your prayer, you create room for God to intervene. So when God wants, when God wants to do more, Satan will say, ah, sir, what did he say? Why? In the realm of the spirit, what you have is based on what you say. Listen to this. Even angels are restricted and released by your words. That's why when the angel appeared to Daniel, what did he say to Daniel? He said, oh Daniel, I've come because of the words of your mouth. He says, I've come. So when you say that all I want is capital and you get 100,000, the angel says, that's what you, you said. Some of you, the way you are confessing, your angels are confused. You say, Father, breakthrough. And your, your angels say, breakthrough. But they don't even know where you want to break through to. Somebody say, hallelujah. You are praying for your children. You say, ah, I'm praying my children will do well. They can do well in a lot of things. So. Football, they can do well in it. They can do well in video games. Is that not true? So when you see your children excelling in video games and failing in school, it is not a failure in prayer. It is a failure in specificity in prayer. James says, you ask and receive not because you ask and miss. You ask and you hit the wrong pole. That's what he says. A businessman is praying. He said, Lord, as I enter this industry, you will give it to me. What does give it to me mean? Jesus, see, let me tell you something. Verse 24, where it says, whatsoever you desire, is predicated on verse 23. And he showed us how he desired. He says, what does verse 23 say? Verse 23 says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast unto the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. It was so specific. This mountain, it is a mountain. He said, this mountain, what should happen to you? Be rooted out and be cast into the sea. That is the way desires are specific. So you see ladies say, I don't know why the great guys are not coming. What have you been asking for? You've been asking for a great guy. A great guy is a great guy. It depends on where he's great. Whenever I saying that, ah, Lord, I'm praying for my father and my mother in this COVID, that they will be strong in Jesus' name. That's true. They will be strong, but they can die strong. Oh, you don't know that? Have you not heard of people that just died in their sleep? They died strong in a very strong way. They, they didn't complain of sickness. They just died. <sighs> because you didn't ask that, Lord, I want their life extended. You didn't ask. You said, well, you want them strong, Abby. So the angels are the minister's strength. That's why the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. What you are saying is killing or destroying you. What you are saying is bringing life or bringing condemnation. I'm trying to... So, Jesus started. He said, whatsoever you desire. There are things... Listen, you must realize that when it comes to prayer, angelic ministry have a vital part to play in prayer. But the thing is this. When your prayer is not specific, because angels cannot read your mind, guess what happens? They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. I'm growing my business. My business is growing, growing. What about it's growing? Let me explain something to you. If you're in this church and you see me lead prayers, and I'm not specific, the reason I'm not specific is not because I don't know what to say. It's because I know you're listening to my prayers. So there are some things I don't want to say into your ears. Because if you hear the things I'm believing God for, you can just enter the ground. So I would just be saying, oh yes, I believe I receive. But in my heart, as I'm saying it, I'll just take the microphone off sometimes or just turn it off and just declare. Then put it up again and just talk. You know? And the reason why is that there are some things, because let me tell you the way this thing works. There are some things you want to say that if people hear you, they'll think you're stupid. But thank God you're not my God, so I'm not concerned about you. 
What did he say? He said, whatsoever you desire. So, let me tell you how poorly this is done. There are people that pray today. Tomorrow, ask them, what did you pray about yesterday? They can't remember. It was not a desire. You were just talking. It didn't mean anything to you. What does not mean nothing to you can mean nothing to God. You were just saying, hey, hey Father, and I, I see all of you are here now. What did you pray for yesterday? Very few people can tell you, I prayed for one, two, three, four, five things yesterday. They can't remember. He said, Father, this, he said, the, the, the work, for example, the work, uh, all of you that, all of, all of you that joined the early morning prayer, you will see the testimonies. See that lady that testified. He said that, Pastor, you said you should believe God for something. I said I was believing God for a hundred thousand pounds. He said, the next day, my brother called me and said, my sister, you've been of a huge support to my business. And because of that, I want to give you $10,000 in cash and $200,000 worth of business shares in my business. And she wondered, why has my brother never said this up to yesterday when we prayed? The reason why is that once she got specific, the power got dynamic. Once she got specific, the power got dynamic. Glory to God. You are here, you are saying that, hey, Lord, I'm praying that my body will be whole. Is your body going to be whole? If you had high blood pressure, you deal with high blood pressure. You don't, see, in hospital, there's no all-purpose drug. Amen? Prayer is not an all-purpose drug also. Is specific. There's no all purpose drug. Say, what well, are we just praying for everything? We're just praying for a bit. Ah, you can't be praying that way. You have to be specific. If you are, if you know that you have high blood pressure or allergy, you start speaking. You start speaking. People in your family they deal with this issue. You speak and attack it. It says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, those are my business will grow. Your business is not a growth issue. What your business needs is customers. You start addressing the issue of customer in business. Some of you, what's your business needs is platform. You need people to let people know what they're doing. You start addressing platform. What is platform? Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the same way the butler mentioned Joseph to the king, I'm asking by the power of the Spirit, let the angels of God move into circulation, the four winds of the earth. Like wind, let there be a Okarusa Kataya. Like wind, let there be an oppression of the Spirit from this place right now that will move into the wind and the atmosphere that begins to influence people that will give me platform to come. And when they give me platform they buy the product and the product makes a profit of this because what you want is not platform is what platform brings someone say hallelujah. hallelujah the major problem is that for us to sit down and believe that's the point that's why it says whatsoever you desire someone says is this so serious Jesus met a man that was blind and he must say, heal me. He said, what do you want? I want to ask you, do you need extra sight when a blind man says, heal me, to know you need sight? Just Christ said, the way it works, we don't assume in the kingdom. It's what you say that happens to you. What do you want? He said, I may receive my sight. He said, receive it. That's what the Bible says. The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. So, where the expectation is vague, the cutting short is vague. When the expectation becomes specific, the cutting shot is specific. Many of you, when you want to pray, you will be very detailed. You will write. And that's why you need to walk in prayer. Because this thing is spiritual intelligence. It's not that you're just going... You know, they, see, there's a religious prayer. Our Father was... That, that's no, no, no. We are talking about the prayer that gets results. That's why next Sunday, sir, fire will fall, sir. Ah. This early morning prayer, I want to show you a testimony. Just watch this testimony from the early morning prayer. Can you put the testimony on the screen, please? Put the testimony on the screen, please. This testimony, the lady sent it. You can, I'm going to post it maybe today or tomorrow, so if it's not clear, I just like shot it. You can see her name there. You can see her name there. It says, on the 5th of August, during the prayer, pastor said, there is someone believing God for a child. In 30 days, go for a pregnancy test. You will be positive. Pastor, I wrote it down on my wall so that I will keep seeing it daily. Did you see? Believing. Many people say, but they prophesied to me, it didn't happen. Can you even remember when they prophesied to you? Listen, one of the things that show you believe is your response. If you said, ah, Pastor, I bought a car. The question is, where is it? How come you receive a prophecy that doesn't affect you? Because you don't believe that prophecy is yours. She was very clear. She said, she said, Pastor, I wrote it down on my wall. See the paper below. That was where she wrote it down. She stamped the paper. She wrote it there. See, this thing is spiritual intelligence. 
The reason why is that you can keep coming to church and be playing and be saying that this and this and this. But when you understand this thing, you will not set any price unanswered. Because this thing... Can I give you something deeper? Can I give you something deeper? Let me ask you a question. I'll come back. Oh. When you eat food, who digests your food? God or digestive system? But God put it there. Listen to me. When you pray, God is not sitting there and saying that this is yes, no, wait a little. There is a principle in the spirit that says once the perfect combination for prayer is entered, what happens? Prayer must be answered. I'm telling you, for example now, if you eat at night and you don't sleep well, you have constipation. If you eat certain food, you have food poisoning. It's not, it's not God giving you food poisoning or something. It's the combination of the inputs you put inside the digestive system that gives you what the output. Some food you eat is toilet. You, you, know, you know those kind of food? When you drink milk, when you eat the beans, you know we are all in trouble. If you eat beans right now, this whole place will scatter. You know that. And there's food you eat that nothing comes out of you. But what determines what comes out is not God. What God did was that God put digestive system in place. The same way he did that, he put the system of prayer in place. What is the system of prayer? Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. He says, if you can get the perfect combination, the problem is not that God is not answering prayer, the combination is faulty. And when you approach safe in life, you don't beg safe to open. You put numbers out. Once the code is not complete, the safe cannot open. It's not a... Once the code is not complete, you can beg to tomorrow, you can cry to tomorrow, you can fast. Safe don't open to fasting. Safe don't open to emotion. Safe open to what? The input of the right code. That's the same way prayer works. Once the code is perfectly entered, heavens will rent open and they'll be displayed. Somebody say hallelujah. And that's why I say when you hear testimony, it's good to hear the story. But find out the principle behind it. So the next thing. It's a pastor. I kept seeing it every day. I will send a picture of it. I waited for the 4th of September, which is today, 30 days. He said, I didn't have any sign. Did you hear that? He said, the way it works, I didn't have any sign. When you believe, the Bible says, Abraham was not considering his body. When you are praying and you are checking your bank account, your bank account will kill what you believe. He said, I didn't have any sign. He said, this morning I woke up to do the test, scared. Because sometimes you are scared, but we believe. Only to see the BFL line. I think, is it BFP? BFP line. I am still in shock, sir. Jesus did it for me. She put the picture of what she wrote. She put the picture of the pregnancy strip. The power of God is here. See, listen, your church is not this, oh, I mean, Atlanta church. No, 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 no. This is, like, this is a church where God lives. Where there's divine presence. You saw the testimony online. We prayed online. Someone ears was deaf. From online, something came out of the ear. One lady came to see me. I know she might even be in this service. She said, for the past maybe eight or ten years, a force walks into our room that our father was in the occult. She said, Pastor, pray for me. I said, I'll not pray for you. I said, this is what I'll do. I said, because I understood the power of desire. I said, go home. Read this. Read this. Read this. Write what you want. Come back. Be confessing. I've not even prayed for her. She came back. I said, Pastor, that spirit being that's been tormenting me for years has stopped. I say it's a combination thing. It's what combination thing. You are crying too much. All you need is combination. You are jumping around too much. All you need is combination. So you hear this Sunday now. Next Sunday, I'm not here to hear the rest. How would the combination be complete? If it's two, four, 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 three, four, you've gotten two, four. The remaining one you didn't get. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. When your desire is strong, it's specific and it's life changing. So, what is the first step in answering prayer? And this, I'm taking it step by step. I'm not going to rush it. The first step is that what is your desire? We have come to work gradually in September, entering into the last quarter. God says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. The question is that what is that thing that is better? Because that thing can be many things. If you are not specific, the anointing can make you look shiner. You'll be, look, you'll be getting six pack. That's what's getting better in your life. If that's what you want. But if you are specific, and see Matthew chapter 11. You can take out the testimony. Matthew chapter 11, verse 24. Sorry, Mark 11, 24. Back to the scripture. Mark 11, 24. Let's just close. Mark 11, 24. 
So it says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. So the desire must be consistent. It's not something you have today, you change your mind tomorrow. No. No, 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 no. It's something you really want and you focus on it. That's why some things, if you understand these prayers, you will not be engaged in some kind of wishful kind of thinking. No, no, you know. Whatsoever you, see, did you notice every time Anna came to pray, Lord, give me a child. The day she said, Lord, if you give me a male child, I will come back. That year she got pregnant. A specific prayer, sir. He said, if you give me a male child, he said, it will become a prophet. He, he, she was so specific. Listen to me. The reason why a lot of people are not specific when it comes to prayer is this, is fear. That, you know what, I don't want to be specific so that I don't get disappointed. So it's like snooker. Since I don't, all the pots are difficult to put holes inside. Let me just play fluke up and down. Anyone that enters, I now played. And God says, no, prayer will not work by fear or by chance. It has to work by principle laid down in the scripture. So I want to be specific. And see what it says. It says, believe. Next week, I'm going to talk about that. But tomorrow, in the morning, 6.30 a.m. on Instagram, we're going to catch fire, sir. Let me tell you something. If you can just determine and just say, okay, these are, I, I, let me say something to you. This is how you start. Don't write too many things. You know, you just started. When you want someone to start something, you don't write 24 things. If you want to start with a child, you write A for Apple. That's what they learn in a day. They go home. They come back. They learn it the second day, the third day. As you want to start now, don't say, I have 50 prayer requests. No. There's always one or two that are the most significant. Just take the one or two. Find scriptures that cover them. Those goals, ask yourself, I declare, when can angels understand this signal in the spirit? And as you are, you begin to declare them. Hallelujah. So tomorrow, when I say pray in the morning, you raise it up and declare fire. And the God that answered by fire, you answer. The next verse, please. Next verse. And it tells us something very here. Verse 25. And when you stand, forgive if any man has uttered against one another. What was he saying here? He said, the way prayer works, prayer is going to work by love. Listen to me. In all your requests and your goals, always say to yourself what you will do as a result of the goals. You know what that does to you? It makes your goals more meaningful. So you will say that if I'm able to scale my business from 200 million to 450 million, I will be able to employ another 85 people and feed their family. That goal becomes stronger because it's outside yourself now. You've given your goal what I call meaning. Are you understand what I'm talking about? The same thing. You are here in church. You are walking by this. You walk by love. You, this is how God will begin to walk in you. God will begin to inspire love in your heart. There'll be seed you have to sow. And when I say seed, you know that pastor give an offering. That's what I'm talking about. Many of you, God will inspire it within you. There will be an opportunity to help. There will be an opportunity to give. In the house of God, there will be a deposit. And God will say, hey, you take that thing and do this. We're going to spend a lot of money on, on some things in church. And someone just said, Pastor, this, um, this government regulation is going to cost a lot. This particular thing, how much does it cost? I said this. And I said, I just feel in my heart that I should do this. And I said, wow, this guy is very smart. Because that is the seed. You know why? Because for you not to be selfish, for you not to be self-focused, God backs up prayer with what love. So that in praying, it's not just what you want. It's what God wants to do through you that will inspire and bless other people. Are you getting me? So I want a car. Not because I want a car. My neighbor goes to office, takes bus. She can have coronavirus. As I carry her with my car, towards can be going there. See how it works out. I want to be able to do this because of this and this and this and this. That is having something purposeful, having something tangible. I want to be able to make my first 100 million because I'm hoping that when the church wants to buy their property, the first 20 million, I'll be the first to give it. That's how you think about it. Oh, I want to support with this and this. That's how you think about it. Are you ready? Let's pray. Were you blessed this morning?